Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Nigerian government restarts 75,000 Naira cash payments to citizens. Minister of Finance Wale Ejun has said the federal government has started, restarted the provision of conditional direct 75,000 Naira cash transfers to 75 million Nigerians to tackle the impact of inflation. Edun, who is the chairman of the Presidential Panel of Social Investment Program, explained that the cash transfer will improve the standard of living of Nigerians in the immediate term. Now, joining us to have a conversation is Mohammed Abdullahi, is a public relations analyst. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning, Nigerians. Always my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're talking about 75,000 Naira to 75 million people, um, you know, because of the high inflation rate right now. Now, I know that Nigeria has over 200 million people. So I'm wondering why is only 75 pe million people that are going to be impacted. That's one. Two, since we're talking about inflation rates, I'm wondering why 75,000 Naira is the figure, because I don't know if 75,000 Naira is enough to tackle inflation. But I just want to get your take and just bring, up us, bring us up to speed with what the government is trying to do and if you think that is what we need as a country right now. Um, yes. Uh, to start with, uh, I think we needed to commend the government, at least uh, for such initiative. Uh, you know, 75 million Nigerians is equivalent to almost 30 percent, if not more, of the total population of Nigeria as of today. So uh, that is a good step uh, in providing, you know, irrespective of the fact that, yes, it isn't such a big amount of money, but at least it's something. At least it can buy a bag of rice, perhaps, uh, and some other few things. But to be, to be serious, I, I think it's not what we actually need. Handing out cash to certain individuals or people uh, um, is actually not uh, what is necessary at the moment or what is important. Perhaps the government should look at uh, schemes that will uh, be more of, uh, that will solve more of uh, short-term and even long-term goals, like farming agriculture, providing tools for farmers. For instance, I don't know whether you experience it, whether you go to market often, you realize that uh, tomato is in fact more precious than gold in Nigeria at the moment. Yeah. And the challenge is the fact that uh, people can't go to farm, people can't transport this commodity from the north to Lagos and so on and so forth, so it's so, so expensive. What is the government doing about this? You know, rather than handing out cash, because like you said, 75,000, uh, in fact, at the moment, a basket of tomato is a, is more than a hundred thousand plus, you know. So yes, on one way, I mean, in one part, I commend the government for at least thinking towards that part of alleviating people's uh, sufferings. But that alleviation is is not even in the short term. It's just it's, it's just in a whisper. I mean, like I, in the blink of an eye, because seventy five thousand cannot take any household <laughs> more than two weeks, perhaps, or even three weeks maximum. To get done with so but the government should think medium term and even long term uh that will have more impact than handing out such cash to section of uh, nigerians hmm. well uh, is that all that you're worried about um what about the do you think there's a structure uh, at all that will make this cash get to whoever needs to get it yeah, that's, that's another problem. Um, you realize uh, the humanitarian ministry was actually, uh, activities there were suspended, I mean, late last year because of uh, distribution issues and so on and so forth. And this is what we've been grappling with. Uh, we, as a country, do not have verifiable data of doing everything that we do, which is shocking. Uh, we have Ministry of Communications, we have uh, so many agencies, but we still find it very difficult, you know, to pin out verifiable, I mean, to pin down verifiable data to carry out some of our, or implement some of our project. It's shocking. And this gives room to a lot of uh, corruption. You understand? Things are not verified. Things can, you know, the minister was just saying, yes, they employed, blah, blah, blah. He needed to give more concrete data. Who and who and how are they, you know, uh, 
you know, making such uh, money available to those beneficiaries? And how did even the government come to the conclusion of, yes, these 75 persons, 75 million persons are the most uh, vulnerable, you know, to, to, to enjoy this uh, grant? So these are some of the challenges. And like I said, it gives room for a lot of manipulations, a lot of corruption. Uh, people at the helm of affairs, I mean, those people will be in charge perhaps might see this as an opportunity also to, to get a bit of their own national cake and so on. Because, yes, you you can just do some abracadabra and say, yeah, you've been to Zamfara, even when you've never stepped there. Uh, you went to Zafé. Zafé is one of the, you know, hinterland local governments there. But nobody's going to supervise, nobody's going to check, and then, yes, uh, those monies end up in private pockets and private coffers. So these are some of, this is very, very challenging. We need to have verifiable data and how we come to the conclusion that things are done. If not, uh, such kind of uh, monies that government are putting, uh, you know, aside for projects like this might just end up largely in people's uh, pocket. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the data because I'm really wondering what criteria they are using to choose the people and the data that, you know, they have to even disburse these funds. But since we're talking about inflation, because, I mean, that's the reason why there must be a cause. The cause for this is to tackle inflation in Nigeria. So how is this really going to tackle inflation if giving handouts to 75 million people? Because it's a one-time um, payment that you get 75,000 naira, but that doesn't really mean that in the next few months um, you'll still be able to afford this same commodities that you're trying you're trying to buy so if i have seventy five thousand naira right now i'm able to afford it what happens tomorrow so how is this really going to tackle inflation and what should the government be doing to tackle inflation aside you know these little palliatives that they're giving handouts yeah that, that, that is the issue uh you you really actually you actually nailed it yeah. Yes, perhaps in 5,000, like I mentioned earlier, three weeks, one month, uh, you buy tomato, gari here and there, rice, and it's, and it's done. So what happened the next month? You understand? But perhaps, again, let's be very fair, uh, there are so many local governments across Nigeria in the hinterland where perhaps 75,000 could begin a little bit of business, yes. Uh, uh, perhaps I, uh, maybe selling of these, maybe even selling of pepper, and so people... Uh, perhaps might think of uh, in, in, in implementing such monies if they perhaps get it then. You know, particularly those outside the cosmopolitan areas, I mean the cities in Nigeria, they might mm -hmm. think of, you know, using such grant rather than just using it to buy food directly. Maybe mm -hmm. using it, if it, if it comes at 175000 yeah, I use it to start something little that might generate, that might continue to but generate. But we never uh, get to these people, that's the problem. Person. And it didn't start today because... I remember when uh, we had a program from the first lady that was being called Better Life for Rural Women. People now started calling it Be Better Life for Royal Women because those are the people that actually enjoyed it. So it didn't start today. The fear is that these people you're mentioning may not even see it. I've, I've heard about it, these palliatives and I come from a village as well. Nobody ever benefited from it. So how will this even get to the people that need it? That is the concern let's, that we are having. Let's, let's be optimistic that this time perhaps that will be a change. Mm. Okay, uh, it's very okay. <laughs> I, I like the optimism. I like the optimism. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah but, perhaps so. Perhaps there might be a change. You yeah. understand? So, but are, are you not um, concerned? Are you not concerned about the fact that may, maybe constitutionally or otherwise, there is there is a law that domiciles this kind of activity in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, which has no head right now. So if the government is mm. beginning or restarting it, it means that it will be taken, you know, without regard to the law that established that kind of action, to another ministry that Nigeria didn't plan for. So these people will just be, be taken suddenly to come and do an activity that they were not meant to do. Are you not worried about that? Yes, I'm actually worried. Uh, you know, it seems, uh, perhaps, I'm not sure, but what is happening, it seems, is the Federal Minister of Finance that might be in charge, uh, since, since they're in charge of Nigeria's monies and so on and so forth. So, from what the uh, minister mentioned, it seems they might be in charge. Uh, definitely, I think, even though the, also, is my opinion, please, I think even though the heads of the humanitarian ministry are suspended, I, I want to believe the ministry is still functioning. I just want, I mean, the civil servants there are still working. So perhaps what might happen 
I'm just saying as well. What might happen is that yes, the Federal Ministry of uh, Finance will be in charge, but definitely in tune with, uh, def uh, I mean, the civil servant from the Federal from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. You understand? That is my thinking anyway. It might be so, and it might not be so. But I don't want to believe that ministry was scrapped. I think what the what the announcement was uh, that the heads, I mean, and some of the projects are suspended for the time being. You know, so. Um, yeah, if, if the ministry is still functioning, then it means at, at least we have a pathway. I mean, we have a template to follow, even though it's not been correct all the while, but at least there's a template on ground that needed to be fine-tuned uh, so that, like you mentioned, people in your village, people in my village, uh, in down uh, a coconut west in those states should be able to get this thing rather than uh, just announcement, rather than them just listening or hearing the announcement on TVs and nothing gets to them. So I am very much optimistic uh, this time around. Perhaps we should be able to begin to get things right. So what measures would you say that they need to put in place, if it's coming from the finance ministry, what measures can they put in place to ensure that there is no fraud, no corruption, and it gets to the right people? Because 75 million people, that's, you know, like you said, it's 30% of the population, even though I think the poverty line is, you know, quite above that at the moment. But that's still something for a few so how do we how how are we sure that you know there's not going to be any corruption involved in this? What measures would you ask the government to put in place? I think for me, I will advocate for a direct transfer. I mean, yes, uh, if we want to be truthful to ourselves, uh, there is hardly any village at the moment in Nigeria that is not connected to any mobile network. At least, whether it's one, it might not be all the major three and even some, but at least one or two uh, is connected. So I think if we eliminate, uh, I mean, hand to hand, if we eliminate that, uh, you know, where we employ more of uh, technology in terms of uh, using the mobile network, like the minister said, you know, registered numbers, you know, now that we have the mean, uh, at least most people, uh, the data are there that most people have registered for the mean and so on and so forth. If we can use that method, I think, it will go a long way in eliminating fraud and corruption in the system. But in, in a system where we still have perhaps no one account officer that is charged uh, with maybe, say, uh, 10 billion or even 1 billion to go and distribute to people in Kogi State or go and distribute to people in Sokoto and so on and so forth, I think that might not all go well. Uh, because uh, by the time we keep using more of manual method, it, it, we are prone to a lot more of corruption and, and fraudulence act. But when we when we employ more of technology, I mean, you know, the mobile network. Now, uh, some of the networks can receive money without bank account. Yeah, I, I don't want to mention names. There are a lot of, you just have your number, take off the first zero. Some companies, some of the uh, major companies, in fact, they have more capabilities than our, our traditional banking system. Yes, they deliver money to people's uh, phone numbers, you know. So I think it's, it should be the way to go, in my own opinion. That will eliminate uh, a lot of uh, corrupt practices and fraudulence in the, in the system. But we are between the devil and the, the blue sea. <coughs> Excuse me. In the fact that, I don't know about your village, but in my village, the poorest of the poor that they are talking about do not have phones. And if they do not have phones, you, you can guess already that they do not even have yeah, bank accounts. Mean... So how does this money get to these people? except you're giving to the people who already have bank accounts and who have phones, who may not even be the poorest of the poor in the community that we are dealing with. Or going to share cash. Yes. So what do we do? Because technology uh, works until it gets to where it cannot work. And the people who need this money are the people that technology is not working for. Well, I'm, I'm really surprised about your village uh, on the lighter note uh, because <laughs> I know there is I, network I, in my village, but there are people that yeah. need this I money. Do they have, don't have they, phones. They can't afford it. They can't. Because I, I know, I know my 85-year-old uh, grandmother that, that that knows nothing about it. Not, doesn't speak English, but she has a phone. You know, so because she can afford uh, it. And this is an apple. Like I said, on the lighter note, yes, <laughs> she can afford it. On the lighter note. Yes. Yes. I, I, I lighter note. So, but I, I think that is where perhaps maybe the National Population Commission comes in. Uh, uh, I mean, perhaps uh, even not the census, but at least perhaps maybe a legwork. I mean, for each state. I mean, those states that are really identified as being very, very poor. We have the NBS data that says some of the states are actually poorer than other states, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Perhaps we have 
a, not a census at the moment, but at least a mini action from the MPC, you know, to go around some of these villages, these hinterlands, you know, to get verifiable data of people, uh, and then maybe we could use that. But again, that is also very dangerous because this, like I said, whenever it, it includes a lot of uh, human uh, physical action, it's all is very much prone to corruption and uh, prejudice. I don't know. The NPC that has not been able to conduct uh, census for how many years now? Mm -hmm. uh, they said they did it uh, how many years ago, but I, I can't even remember the last time that census was done. And then they now said but we're going to conduct... They were gearing up to... Uh, last year. Uh, yeah. The actually stopped them. They were gearing up. They've been allocated money, you know, they've been budgeted for... Uh, to conduct census. They knew the before, timing was but, uh, bad. They still went ahead. And then when they said, don't do it, it was like, hey, we, we tried our best. Now we're not hearing anything. They say they are going to do it. We are not hearing anything. Census should be conducted at uh, highest years. 10 years. Yes, and years. now we've not heard anything from, from the NPC. So this is a, You can't blame the NPC because, I mean, the, the current government actually suspended it. So uh, there's nothing the head of the NPC could do if uh, the president and the presidency says we should hold on uh, with the census. So I think that shouldn't be the fault. It's just like every sphere, every sphere of our life in Nigeria, you know, things are not done the, the right way it should, uh, which is challenging, uh, which, which, is, which is very unfortunate, you understand. So, you know, one policy from the government can just come to move. In fact, it, it, it's getting to a point where uh, jokingly, you might decide to get married tomorrow and then government will say, no, you can't use that land. Uh, perhaps mm -hmm. uh, that hall is, is, is to be demolished tomorrow. So, you know, that changes every of your plan almost immediately. So, uh, this or is they some change your marriage list for you and say things are costly. <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> Ahmed, as we wrap up, just please go ahead. Yeah, so... That is it. Um, so I don't think the blame should be on MPC. At least they were, whether it is real or not, they were actually gearing up to conduct the census towards the end of Buhari's regime, blah, 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 and so on. A lot of billions were allocated. But the new government says, come on, just just wait. Uh, wait for our directives and so on. So perhaps we're still waiting. Because what we, what we keep banding all over the internet space is that we are more than 200 million. It's actually still not verifiable. Uh, the last time we conducted elections, we were less than maybe one something million, one and something, or even ninety something million. So we just keep banding these uh, people here and there without, uh, you know, without we not even data to to million. Mm. That's a possibility as well. Well, that's why we need to have a sensor so we know what the actual figure is. But um, in sure, regards sure. to you know the the um, this seventy five thousand naira being given to some citizens i just hope that they are able to get it i hope that you know the right people who really need it at this time can get that fund and also it's not just um you know a palliative to say we're giving you this handout and tomorrow face your front because we can't do anything <laughs> for you happen. so we we hope that the government is really doing something when it comes to tackling inflation and you know just helping us to grow our economy this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment thank you so much mohammed for coming Thank you very much. My pleasure. All right. Okay, we've been speaking with Mohamed Abdullahi. He is a public relations analyst, and we've just been talking about the fact that the federal government has decided to give 75,000 naira to 75 million people in Nigeria to help tackle the high rate of inflation. But this is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. It's been lovely having a breakfast with you as always. My name is Gomez Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. I hail you. <laughs> we hail <laughs> thee. Have an amazing day.